PC peeps, Stangly Bob here, and uh, welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. And this time we are trying to tackle the second mission in the Making History downloadable content pack. As we found for the first one, these are not particularly easy, and they are uh, not really for beginners. So you're better off using the career method. Uh, just sticking to the basic programming career, in a career mode rather than method. And uh, at this time when we're recording this, um, here in the UK we're in sort of, well, the Prime Minister has just announced a lockdown, so I'm going to do this with the rest of the family around the back of the house so we hear some weird noises. We'll see some weird things on the webcam, I have the webcam up. It's because we live in a small house and there's lots of us here, but we'll do what we can. So I'm just building a uh, rocket in two stages here, and we're looking at building something that can get up to 48,000 meters and can take a temperature reading that reading and then come back down again. So my plan was to originally build a, uh, a two-stage rocket, uh, one to get through the thick part of the atmosphere and ditch that and use a, an upper stage. Now we're sort of messing around with using either the, the larger rocket they've given us for this, because we haven't got all the parts for this, or uh, using the, the, the swivels for the, for the upper stage, the larger rocket, even though that's that sticky out bit, it's going to ruin the aerodynamics of the rocket. But um, So something fairly simple, um, the only probe we've got is the stay put nick thing, uh, which has obviously got no SAS capability either, which just makes life even more difficult. As you can see, on this here, they've actually given us some extra bits to fly through. So there's these three nodes, waypoints here. It's not a straight easterly course either they want us to, to fly up to. So that's going to be at about sort of 60 degrees. And uh, obviously you know, I can't just pick my own trajectory, trajectory um, to, uh, to get through those. So it's a little bit more tricky bearing in mind that I uh, don't want to use Smart a ASS to get through that. I'm going to have to try and do it by hand. Um, yeah. don't know what that ping was. I think somebody Microsoft messaging me. I'll have to check out that later. So, I haven't put fins on this, the uh, swivel rocket I've got on the bottom of this one. Because uh, it's got lots of, lots of gimbling to it, so it should be able to get me in the direction I want to go to, providing it's not too, so about 100 we'll start tipping ourselves over. So it sort of swivel us around a little, maybe, just get us over. So I'm wanting to, wanting to go the other way for some reason. So without SAS, without any stability, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, as we get up the tack tree, hopefully I can start putting reaction wheels in and start, uh, start getting a bit wobbly. And now I've just completely lost it. So we'll revert back to the... Right, after that soon realise now I've needed a little bit more speed to try and keep some stability up and some fins. Make the first stage three lots of 800 tanks and the second stage I've gone for an 800 tank and a 400 tank and with a stay put nick and this little hat of a, of a uh, parachute on the top. And I put some, some fins in on the second stage as well just because some of this is going to be in the inner atmosphere anyway so we'll see what uh, three stages are. I did try the bigger rocket, uh, I must admit, on one I didn't film, and it doesn't, to be honest, doesn't make that much difference. I've got the three smaller rockets because they fit better. So I've uh, gone for a quick takeoff, turn on the navigation to that, we're up to a hundred, turn it around and try and tip her over about 60 degrees on the heading, start off on a gravity turn. So we need navigation on. It gives you a nice mark on the map board from side 4, but these waypoints aren't marked in the real life as such. So 
just get some aerodynamic effect appearing on that. And I'll just try to tip my keep that prograde marker heading up at about sort of 60 degrees, which is which is a nut. I think we've got like a little bit too steep. So I'm gonna have to come over or push it over. I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna fly way over the top of it. So we need we need a much, much flatter turret actually. Goes the first stage. So then use that. So about 17, 18 thousand meters. Not quite halfway yet. Uh, sort of off to the south of the marker as well as above it. And a pop out, having some heat effects now. That really shouldn't make too much difference apart from obviously it shows we've got drag on. I haven't got any, any mods which show. Uh, realistic heating or anything like that. Looking good on a heading wise now though. So we've really flattened out my trajectory. Oops, I can't remember that word today. So it actually looks like I'm going to get through pretty close to both of those if they're not actually going to go through them. So we'll coast on up. Looks like we're going to be a little bit far up. Yeah. Looks like I'm a bit, a bit too high for those. Coast on up to the second one as well. It looks like yeah, we're just, I'm just going to pin that down there because I don't know how long we're going to be up above the 48,000 and I'm liable to forget, but uh, we're going to be way too high for that one. So. Right, we'll just ignore those then. I mean, those are, from what I remember, I've seen a couple of videos of missions, not necessarily the history, but I haven't seen any of these uh, historical missions like these. But uh, they give you, obviously, if you hit the hit the markers, they uh, give you the extra points, but you don't necessarily have to hit them to pass the mission or complete the mission. So just coming up to forty-eight thousand now. So we'll take that log reading. And keep it. There we go. Just drift it down. You just scraped in the 48,000. That should be good. As I said, just got the trajectory a little bit long, but yeah, as you can see, that's well, that's where I want us to land. And I'm yeah, not too sure how I'd get a trajectory on a lower tra on a lower height. If I lower my apoapsis, I wouldn't hit 48,000. If I raise it too far back but um, not a lot of air resistance here so the fins don't make a lot of difference it's a little bit what I need to do is come around and burn retrograde bring that uh, landing point in otherwise we're going to sail straight past it again I don't quite know whether that's going to be uh, what I need obviously yeah Keep myself broadside onto the heat effect. That will give me a little bit more, a little bit more drag. Slow us down a bit quicker. Really doesn't want to. I can't get myself around the other way. I'm too much like a lord dart. I think uh, the more the thicker the air I get, the fins are going to act against me. I'll be able to swing myself around, retrograde and burn slower. So. Just delete that, delete it, reject that last stage, and give up on trying to slow down. We'll get rid of our parachute actually. Not too bad, it, it is coming back this way, but we are a fair bit south of our waypoint. My hope is now, providing we don't burn the parachute off, thankfully we're slowing down. As soon as I can get the parachute out, that'll, that'll slow our horizontal speed down a lot as well, so come on. I mean look at that, you've got sixty odd kilometer radius. So providing I stay within that, it should be alright. Thirty kilometers away from it. So that's 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 quite a big big circle. I don't have to land that to that too close to it. The Woomerang landing site keeps throwing me off when I see it through them planet there. 
This is going to take a little while to come down. We are coming straight down now, so we're not getting any further away from the waypoint. We can use uh, physics time warp to accelerate down. And we've got a mission failure. Uh, how can that be a mission failure? Well, I've scored 7,000. I hit. By the looks of things, I got the easy fly through. I got the upper atmosphere. Those, that's the yeah, K7 is the is that's the first mission. Those first bits up there. Um, so scrolling down. Looks like I got the medium fly through as well, but I don't understand why the mission failed. Didn't get any points for splashing down because I didn't actually splash down. But hmm. So at this point of the game, I realised that with my limited skill, I was never going to fly through those waypoints and decided I had to use Smart ASS. And this is by no means the first or even the last couple of shots I had at it. But sped them up to 400 just so you can see what happens and I'll see you around at the other end actually figured out what the problem is. Uh, it's all to do with, and you might spot it sort of earlier in the video if you're watching, that uh, uh, yeah, it was a routing problem. Yeah, you get to choose what route you want the aircraft or the spacecraft to, to be. So you know which part you want it to be the, the route of the aircraft, so the, the, the ultimate parent part if you like. 
and uh, I've got very excited. I've got to film it, show exactly what I mean, but I'll show it on another video. But yes, after that, I made the stay putnik the actual route because I'd actually turned the I think it was the, the ring underneath it, the uh, uh, the connecting ring for the life of me. I can't remember what it's called now, but yeah, I'd made that the route part. And because that is the bit that gets ejected when it comes to this point, no, not this point here, a little bit further on, but once you've ejected that and that bit crashes into the sea because it gets destroyed, that's why the mission was failing because the game was thinking that is the bit that it was, uh, that was the parent part of the aircraft, if you like. Because most of the times you have to put something like uh, one of the, the either the uh, the capsule or the pro core that is usually the parent part of the aircraft or the root part of the aircraft so that's the bit you want to save certainly if it's the capsule because it's the bit that got kerbals in we try and save our kerbals but uh, as you can see this one here again i don't think i missed the uh missed the, the way marks by a mile I didn't do as, as quite as well as that first one we showed you where it failed anyway but certainly I'm now burning retrograde. And I said, you know, I used, I used Smart ASS to, on this just to make sure that I wasn't hitting as many of the points as I could. But uh, I might go back and see how well I can do on this on a manual mission. But uh, so rapidly losing interest in this mission at this point. I just wanted to get it out of the way so we could try the last leg of this first mission. Beginner's mission, it is not. But yeah, it's on the way now. So. Just burning a little bit uh, radial and a little bit retrograde, not radial, normal, anti-normal, a little bit retrograde just to bring the point in as close as I can, even though I know that you know, I can land within 60 kilometers of it. You can see that's fairly easy to do, providing you know, you've got some stability there, you've got some uh, fins and you're, slow, and you're not falling too fast. Got a little bit of sort of lateral stability there where you can sort of angle yourself a little bit and use the gimbling engine to push you around a little bit more because uh, so it won't do it on its own and actually i've made things a lot worse there so I'm just going to go retrograde again try and give us a little bit of a little bit of engine just to i think i've probably given it up i have yep ejected the main engine and now you can see because I can't see whether I've uh, landed the first stage in the sea there or not, but we certainly haven't had the failure message up and for this last bit. Just have to wait the agonizing few minutes as we come down from 13,000 meters down to 1,000 meters where the parachute will fully open up. And I slowed it down in a moment just to catch the last couple hundred meters in glorious full res, full speed. In fact, it's, this is what makes it so agonizingly slow. Yeah, even with this, just the single parachute on the on a core, we're falling at two and a half meters per second. I mean, most of us can walk faster than that. But come on, as we touch down, I've got a good feeling about this one does give me a chance to say thank you very much for watching the video if you'd like to see more let me know in the comments down below hit the like button subscribe if you want and can I talk about any more 300 meters to go by all means go check out our other videos and hopefully I'll be able to produce a bit more sp Kerbal Space Program um, this works I should be definitely cracking on with that last mission of this first or well, last waypoint as they call it this first mission and get that out of the way how many more of these i don't know because they are actually quite stressful trying to figure it out and do the problem solving but that's why i like the game here we go 20 meters 10 9 8 2, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we're there oh look at that absolutely brilliant uh big sigh of relief that that's actually worked admittedly it probably would have worked hours back if I've been able to do it. But otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one.